Great, thanks. Um, now, I know we have our list of questions here, but, but Rob really brought up something really good in the conversation between Rob and Brenda. And I wanted to know that any of our other panelists want to address the issue about being able to spend time as a part of a federal employee of the federal workforce, and then to go into the private sector expand upon your skills, gain additional skills, and then come back into um, federal service. Did anyone else want to chime in on that? Uh, so I did have about 23 years of federal service, and I've been an IDA researcher ever since. since. Working with the federal government, though, from this position, I feel like I'm part of the federal government. You can do that at time. It's a good team and a good partnership, but we still have that independence, though. But I, it, it has merit to spend time in the federal government, go into private sector, see what they're doing, and bring that back. And I know the DOD CIO and DHS CIO are looking at that. And, um, it, it, uh, it takes a cultural change within the leadership, though, because, you know, in the DOD, the military side, anyway, you're on a career path, right? And if you spend time exiting out to the side for a, a job that may not be related to cyber or whatever, that may hold you back from being advanced. So there's things that can be done to account, uh, account for that, but uh, yeah. Uh, there is great benefit, I think, to having some type of exchange program with technology companies where they might come into the DOD and help out and uh, an individual go into their service, whether it be a full-time uh, company or just temporary DOD. Um, now, Doug, we'll start with you. What do you think are some of the primary needs um, through which the public and the private sectors can identify the necessary IT and IA skills um, that are actually needed in the cyber world? Monster.com? Um, no, seriously. Um, I, well, I've had numerous conversations, especially with folks in the private sector who uh, have this responsibility, and they struggle with finding uh, employees. Uh, um, Mike Papay, Northrop Grumman, CISO, will tell you that on any given day, he's got two or 300 open spots globally that he, he can't find the people. Uh, they've actually started uh, looking at community colleges and hiring community college students as a way to uh, to give them experience but also augment their workforce. I think on the on the government side, um, we struggle as well. You know, it's mm -hmm. USA jobs and um, it really ends up being you got to know somebody to, and then you spend the time to try to get them in. Uh, as you know, um, on our Cyber Skills Task Force, uh, I raised the issue about the government's ability to bring in a non-traditional hire. So. I presented a scenario that I'm an 18-year-old, just graduated from high school, and I'm the, you know, the best cyber guru in the country, could DHS hire me? And all of the uh, HR people looked at each other and finally decided that they couldn't. So I said, okay, I'm a college, I'm a two-year college graduate, I have an associate's degree, now can you hire me? And the HR people all looked around and said, no, we don't think we could hire you. So I think in part of this shoot ourselves in the foot problem is we also have processes that are expecting a four-year degree uh, in something to be able to actually be able to hire somebody into the government. I think you know, we need to think that angle from, uh, from as we look at hiring to you know, not everybody's going to have a four-year degree. I think some of the things that uh, the Veterans Administration are doing with, uh, with some of their aspects of, of their uh, GI Bill and other things are another way for the government to look at how to hire. If I can take that over for sure, and also add that the four years of military experience do not count as a degree either. Yeah. It's sort of a, a shame, especially when they have the cyber experience yeah. in the military. So if I'm going to pile on, I actually don't think we disagree. I actually think it's a great thing. What I'd like to see before somebody, like in my example of Matt, goes is that we just get the time back. The government's put money into his training, and so meet a minimum service obligation before leaving, which is actually probably what should have happened under existing rules on the workforce and somehow didn't. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. So I think it's a great model. I also think when you look at this problem of who's got skills versus who's got the credentials to get hired, we need to come up with a just vastly different model where we assess the skills rather than looking for the certifications, right? And we could do this, and we've seen, if anybody was at a DEF CON recently, you've seen capture the packet, you've seen capture the flag. There are events like these all the time. If somebody has won one of these events but doesn't have any kind of degree at all, I like to get them in the Department of Homeland Security. I don't actually care whether they've got a two-year degree or a four-year degree or four years of military service. 
right? If they got the skills and they can get a clearance, I think that should probably be enough. And at the department, um, we have a we have new authority that we just granted in December. We're actually working through the development of the regulations to implement that. And the implementation <clears throat> of, that, of those authorities um, will help us deal with some of those issues where we're primarily looking at um, the skill that the person has versus um, educational requirements or things like that that are part of the traditional HR um, hiring process in the, in the federal space. Um, now, how, how can the skills and the technical competence of the current and transitioning cyber workforce um, best be maintained or enhanced? Um, um, Steve, do you want to chime in? Okay. Uh, for the DOD, that's a, that's a significant challenge, and I know a lot of people right now are doing that on their own. They're taking the classes and courses, uh, getting the certifications, but one thing that we're looking at for the Department of Defense and in concert with them and also with DHS is, is a way to set up and have as a requirement that a person can demonstrate through a third-party attestation that you can perform the cyber skills for a very specific cyber role. So we're looking at how different venues can be stood up to independently do that. And I think uh, Margaret Leary from Northern Virginia Community College is, is working on a model that might be very good for that, you know, using a cyber range or something like that. So yeah, what we're talking about is, is perhaps you as an individual can um, uh, gain access to the DOD cyber range and they have a vignette out there and you actually go out there and demonstrate that under some attack scenario or defensive scenario that you can do the jobs and demonstrate it and therefore not have the requisite time and serves that traditionally comes with it, which we, a lot of us know, is not the right requisite thing to have there. You may have 15 years of service and still not be the right person for the job. So there's, we're, we're looking at that. Um, we're not there yet. You know, your, your cyber mission forces up at the Cybercom are beginning to do that and they're trying to roll out a very extensive capability. It's going to cost you know, probably upwards of $30 million per year to make that happen. And they're looking to enhance that for the greater DOD. And I would say that would be a greater, the greater DOD should also include maybe DHS as where you can bring in teams of individuals in your organization to uh, go up against the a real known threat that's simulated somehow and demonstrate you can do those skills. I think that would be a great future area to leverage with the Department of Defense. Again, that doesn't help new students trying to come in, but I think universities and colleges are, are looking at that strongly, and I think the DOD needs to recognize that. I, I would, would say I agree with all the other comments here. I think one of the systemic problems we have is the Office of Personal Management, their guidelines for hiring someone in the technical skills needs to be revised. I'm not going to say it needs to be updated, but it needs to be revised to reflect the cyber environment because it currently does not. So it's recommending that, for example, a, a new person coming from outside into the DOD or DHS at a GS-11 position, which is a senior position but not too senior, you should have a PhD in the requisite uh, computer science degree. Unfortunately, the pay is not commensurate with that. Yeah, so there's some workarounds on that, but it's not there. You need really special authority. So I think if we could refine that, and I say it's because having visited a lot of two-year colleges and four-year colleges and institutions, they really have upped their game on the students that are graduating from there and they can immediately fill jobs right now that people with masters are filling. And so I think if we can capture that, recognize that, and bring them in, that would be a great, really great people. Doug, you want to chime in? Yeah, I think... Um, I think we just need to do more of that annual training where we sit in front of the computer for about an hour. And uh, after I'm done with that, I'm good for the next year. Um, We're revising that right now, by the way, if you want to help out do it. Yeah. Well, I've just finished mine. It took me an hour and a half, and so I'm trained. No, um, and competent, right? And yes. competent, yeah. I can spell cyber, so that makes me an expert. Um, no, I, I think it's a difficult challenge, uh, e even on the private sector side. Is uh, I mean, I've had conversations with folks where they're doing innovative things with, um, you know, one day a week, encouraging employees to go out and you know do their own study, take you know classes, etc. I think you know you have to think about new models uh, in the changing pace. Technology is changing so fast. If you just spend all day sitting at your desk doing your job, you're going to be behind in no time. Um, and I think uh, that often happens in the government. 
um, where you're not given time to train, and if you are, you're given the you know go go do the annual training that provides you no value. Mm -hmm. I know at the department we partnered with um, OSD Readiness and Training um, to work on developing a training course, which they kicked off this summer. That actually took content that we had gathered um, from our task force days, um, where we went around the department and held um, held sessions where we looked at what were the skills needed to perform a certain position, from advanced to beginner. Um, and we gathered that information and shared some of that with DOD um, to assist them in developing a course that's actually taking place this summer over at Fort Myer. And so we're trying to look at non-traditional ways to be able to train our existing workforce. 